Well, I don't have any relationship with President Zuma. Even then, it was a, a political relations. He was a president of the ANC. I was a president of the Youth League. And uh, that's how we related. I've been to President Zuma's house, I think, three times. I've never been to Nkandla. So if we've had such a, a cozy relationship, for sure I would have frequented all his wedding celebrations, the Christmas celebrations in Nkandla, like many other people have done so. I've never done that. And, uh, and uh, me and Balula actually had actually taken a conscious decision at the time that we shouldn't be seen to be going to Ngandla or President Zuma's houses so that he confuses us to be part of his children and not his uh, colleagues uh, and, uh, you know, misunderstand our relationship to be that of a political relation and not a personal relations. I don't know if Mbalula went after me, but we had taken a decision that we shouldn't go to his house. Even when we had uh, that type of a rela good relationship uh, with him uh, uh, politically. You know, we, I personally thank the ancestors and God to have kept me uh, up to this far to ensure that we correct that mistake we've made in history. And when we formed the EFF and when I went to parliament, I said, well, we apologize for having given South Africa uh, this uh, dunder head which can't think and uh, we are still alive, we are going to correct that mistake, we are going to ensure that he gets removed as a president of the country and uh, we have achieved that, we, we, we stick to our ways and uh, we fought uh, tooth and nail, we did everything else, we were beaten up in parliament, uh, people didn't want to listen to what we were saying until they themselves came to their senses and began to join the EFF's call that uh, the president must step down. This is the second president that's been removed from office. In the future, the other generations are going to say, OK, we can remove a president after a month or so. How are we going to arrest the situation? We don't have to arrest it. We shouldn't. Why? President must be removed after a day, president must be removed after three days. The good thing with our constitution is that the president gets replaced without, you know, spending money on elections or anything of that sort. Parliament just goes and from amongst the elite, they elect one of their own and then continue a business as usual. It must be easy to remove a president so that any other president who comes after President Mbeki and President Zuma should know that one mistake, I'm out of this office. So we must uh, expect, uh, you know, high standards from a president. And uh, the president must hold that office with the highest form of respect. And where he's got doubt, he must consult the country as to what is the necessary step to take in a situation like this. Going forward, what is the strategy? What would you like to see happening in Parliament? Now Parliament is biting. Everyone else who gets to be called by Parliament, they shiver, they start sweating because they know that they are going to be held uh, uh, accountable. We are happy. Today, Nomvula has messed up the water uh, department, shifted to communication. Parliament says she must still come back to account for water mess. In the past, once you are shifted from your department, then it's gone. Then you will never be called again to come and account for the previous mess. Actually, they will say, no, there is a new minister there. The new minister must answer. In this case, Parliament says, no ways. It's not a departmental issue. It's an individual conduct which has led to this situation. She must be called back to account. ESCOM, uh, uh, all the SOEs are now being called to come and account. The private sector is now being called to come and account as long as they behave in a manner that puts the lives of South Africans, you know, in danger. So I'm happy that uh, we're playing a meaningful uh, role. Um, when Ramaphosa won the ANC presidency in December and uh, his, uh, you know, election as a president of the country, people said the EFF's relevance is gone, is done. But we need to ask the question, who has been in the headlines in the past two days? after all analysts reached consensus that the EFF is irrelevant. We, we know the game, we are not analysts, we are politicians, we are tacticians, we are scenario planners, we know what is going to happen in the future and how we must position 
uh, uh, ourselves now. So we are going to be here for a very long time. We are now even procuring an office, permanent building in Johannesburg for the EFF because we don't want to be a political organization that is run from a boot of a car. We, we mean business and we believe that the buying of office is a demonstration of a staying power, that we are not going anywhere. We are going to fight for economic emancipation uh, of our people. When Zuma left, Ramaphosa came, gave uh, the state of the nation, then there was a debate. That's where every South African said, we want to see what's going to happen now. Zuma is gone. These howlers are going to be irrelevant. The superstars of that debate is the EFF. All the non-thinkers in the ANC were hiding behind Zuma's problems. Now Zuma is gone. They must reason. They don't have reasoning. They don't have superior logic. They are not intellectually gifted, including their president, who lacks intellectual depth. He talks about the things that he meets on the streets and the stories that he came across. He, he, he talks like my grandmother. It means my grandmother can come and respond to the State of the Nation address. Because my grandmother, half the time I'm with her, she tells me, when I was from the shop, I met Mr. So and so. This is what he said. That's what the president said in response to an intellectual debate which was put forward in that parliament during his uh, State of the Nation address. He couldn't come anywhere closer. Uh, to the leadership of uh, the EFF. So the question as to what is going to happen to the EFF since Zuma is gone has been answered by the debate in the State of the Nation address and the subsequent engagements after the State of the Nation address. The EFF has been on the lips and dinner tables of all South Africans. Do you see a relationship developing between the EFF and the ANC on certain strategic issues? Well, uh, he responded to the EFF Deputy President, uh, Sophie, all we're talking about is depth. To say to you, uh, Ms., uh, Mr. Uh, Shivambo, we agree with you, there's no depth there. You ought to, you know, contextualize as to what are you agreeing with, uh, you know. So he didn't do that. Um, um, the President is a, an approachable person. It's a man that you know, uh, creates an impression that he wants to talk uh, and he will be prepared to talk to uh, everybody. And uh, we welcome that type of uh, an attitude because you wouldn't get that from President Mbeki, you wouldn't get that from President Zuma. They were like very far from uh, the opposition in particular and any other person who wanted to make a, a suggestion. And uh, you know, that type of an approach, if he keeps it and he sustains it, is disempowering. Because even if I'm not going to do what you are telling me to do, the fact that I listened to you, uh, it neutralizes you and it makes you to soften your approach when it comes to me. So I've studied his conduct and I've dealt with such individuals before who are uh, disarming even though they are not uh, 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 genuine. He will do that to the other opposition parties. We have not been to the ANC, we have not worked with him before, I worked with him before. I know his politics, so uh, he can't disempower the, the, the EFF. If invited by the president, we said that to the leadership of the EFF, to make input on cabinet, to make input on any other thing, we'll do so. Okay, unashamedly, it doesn't mean we're working with uh, the ANC. Anyone else uh, who calls me and says this is the issue, I, I, will raise it. I was talking to Musi the other time about uh, the possible contest in the DA. And they were saying, I'm hearing names there, and they say, ah, there's no such a thing, and all that. Because there is, a, you know, that type of a relationship, you know, cordial relationship amongst uh, political leaders in parliament. I uh, responded to Terra in a manner I did in parliament. When we finished, we're outside, me and him talking, he says, you're avoiding me. I said, no, we must find time and meet and engage further on these issues we disagree on here uh, in parliament. We are not enemies. President Zuma wanted to create a, you know, an environment of uh, enemies uh, and create an impression that we're actually personally fighting, but only to realize that it's not about a personal issue, it's about differences on the direction the country uh, should take. How do we start sustain this? Well, we are the thinking tank of this country. 
and uh, proper superior ideas come from this organization. And that's how we contribute to the development of South Africa. If you take the land expropriation, for instance, it has been championed by the EFF. If you take free education, for instance, it has been championed by the EFF. If you take a, a minimum wage, for instance, it has been championed by the EFF. Now we are championing uh, quality public health care. Uh, we had demonstrations yesterday. You can be rest assured that everyone else is going to pay the necessary attention now uh, on, on public health. We are at the center of demanding that the economy should be transformed and should be inclusive of our people and we should create more jobs and fight uh, uh, corruption. So we are not just redundant. We are leading through our ideas, through the, the occupying the picket lines, through taking the shenanigans to court and through engagement in parliament by ensuring that right things uh, are done. You can be guaranteed that uh, in 2019, through a coalition or through direct winning of elections, will be in government. In Gauteng is a given. They will not come back here uh, in Gauteng. And through these powerful ideas we'll have, we have, then we can use them to now we can use government to now implement these powerful ideas uh, we have to the betterment of our country and its people. Do you feel aggrieved that the nation hasn't really rallied behind you in a very forceful manner? I, I, I'm, I'm very happy. The, the, the nation comes from a, a difficult past. They, they've got very bad experiences of opposition parties that mushroom and disappear. So. They, they shouldn't trust any other organization, including the EFF, which is just a new uh, born into uh, politics of uh, uh, South Africa. So I fully understand the attitude of the South African electorate, and I celebrate it because now they want everyone else to earn their trust. You must earn it. And, uh, and I'm happy that the EFF is gradually earning the trust of South Africans. Let's go to Metsima Hall, for instance. The EFF retains almost the numbers it got in 2016 uh, local government elections, retains the same number of councillors it got in the previous election, but the turnout is low. So the turnout compared to 2016 is low. So what does it tell you? It tells you that the EFF, even though it maintained the numbers and the number of councillors, but percentage-wise, it has increased meaning South Africans are beginning to trust the EFF in all the by-elections. Even when we don't win them, we have not lost a single vote. We get increase and we have taken a decision to contest each and every by-election, including in the most difficult areas. Why? We use that as a practical research to test if that which Twitter is telling us it is indeed a reflection of the feelings of the voters uh, on the ground. And from where I'm sitting, we are doing very well. Research shows that the EFF is the only organization that is growing at an abnormal speed. So I'm happy with the, uh, uh, the confidence, the gradual confidence the South Africans are continuing to pass on the EFF. Many people have criticized your policies, saying that they don't create a conducive environment for investment. What's your reaction? Your policies are a disaster, according to people, some, some investors. They must go to China and see if those policies are a disaster because our policies are almost the Chinese uh, uh, policies. And what is the biggest economy today uh, in the world is China, uh, uh, even though Americans may want to be in denial. So every company that says it, uh, it can invest in South Africa because of such uh, policies, particularly the multinational companies, let's trace them and see if they've not invested uh, in China. They did invest in China because the Chinese policies are clear. And, and that's what we want to do here uh, in South Africa. We're not calling for a, a complete uh, ban for private participation in South Africa. We're not calling for a banning of uh, a foreign a direct investment. All we're saying is that it must be done through our own wishes as South Africans, multinational companies should not come and impose themselves uh, on us. So 
That's how it is. Um, 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 they are saying we shouldn't do these policies because it's, a, it's more of a racist issue than any other thing. Because our policies are going to change ownership patterns in South Africa and they're going to crush white privilege. And anything that threatens white privilege, whites will not support it, whites uh, will not call for in, uh, investment uh, in South Africa. They can afford to call for disinvestment in South Africa because they've got second homes. Uh, but we are not going to be scared to take decisions because of fear of the unknown uh, by white people. For 24 years, we've said to them, transform. They refused. We're now pushing them. Look at how the land question is being dealt with in South Africa. It's dealt with through legislation, through parliament, through consensus. It's not dealt with through uh, the carrying of machete and the occupying of farms and killing of people and the army coming in to forcefully remove people. So you first look at the similarities and therefore there are no similarities. Actually, we are now beginning to get calls from white people who are saying we agree, we must just be taken along, we need to get an assurance that we are not a target. So uh, it is done through a, a democratic process, it is done through a constitution. So those who are saying we are like Zimbabwe, they are alarmist. Even in Zimbabwe, if it was done properly, um, I don't think they would have experienced uh, what they have experienced. The white people and investors had a problem with the beating, had a problem uh, with the killings uh, which were happening uh, in the country. Otherwise, the whites were beginning to move back now, even under Mugabe, back into uh, Zimbabwe. Munangangwa, when he came in, he sent uh, a mixed message. Now he's back to his senses. He says, no, there's no one who's going to get any compensation, white people, compensation for the land here. They must come back. We need to talk on how we reallocate them some portions of land. That's the right thing to do. Whites will not leave South Africa yeah, because of that. Well, the banks must participate. The banks must tell us what should we do uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as a country to, uh, uh, to transfer the land uh, back, back into the hands of the people. I, I don't but, think we'll but, be but willing how, to collapse the banks. But how are you going to engage the banks to address their concerns? No, no, we are now in a constitutional review process. The banks must come and make their submission. And I'm saying to you, they are concerned. The banks is the bond. Uh, they, they are criminal syndicate, which is called bonds. Let them come and talk to us. And then they must tell us. We will be willing to listen to the banks. And the banks must be willing to say to us, and which is what we listen to as the EFF. Sophie's land is worth, or we gave it 12 million to buy the land. Remember, if they give you 12 million to buy the land, you're going to end up paying 34, 45 million. If you gave Sophie 12 million, let's talk about how you get your 12 million. Not the rest of other bond criminal syndicate. You offer the 12 million. Let's see how we can find each other with regard to, to the 12 million. So the banks must participate. There, there's nothing special about the banks. They ought to come to the constitutional review uh, committee there's going to be a huge uh, consultations with business, uh, with communities, with traditional leaders on how the land question uh, should be dealt with going forward. The EFF principle is very clear. It shouldn't be disastrous. It shouldn't collapse the economy. That should tell you that we're prepared uh, to listen. It doesn't matter what, which other things we do. At the ultimate end, the land must be restored in the hands of the people. We shouldn't say that the land can't be restored into the hands of the people because the bondage system is going to collapse the bank. No, that will not agree with us. So when you take the land back, do you give it to individuals or you give it to the state? We give it to the state. This time around, why are you hopeful that the state will be able to manage this asset, the land, properly? It's a democratic state. The fact that people have trusted it, I don't have any reason to doubt it. The Freedom Charter said a democratic state must be the custodian of the interest 
of the people of South Africa. It must be based on the will of the people of South Africa. We might have uh, examples of uh, a badly run uh, state-owned uh, enterprises, but uh, we shouldn't create a situation of a hopelessness. Our country is still here, our country is still running, our country has got institutional mechanisms to resolve any complex matter. So even the land shall be resolved through the institutions uh, of a uh, democracy. I may not trust uh, the ANC government, but I trust the country called South Africa and its constitution, which makes it possible to resolve any other issue uh, peacefully and allow the country to run smoothly. If we're any other country, under Zuma would have expect we would have experienced, you know, the most traumatic situations. But our constitution and institutions of democracy have protected us, protected us from that possible disaster. And our constitution and institutions of democracy will ensure that there is a smooth transfer of land ownership into the hands of the people through the state being the custodian. Let's talk about correcting the mistakes of the past. The issue of security cluster is a thorny issue. We've dealt with economy, we've dealt with the land question, which is part of the asset, part of the economy and empowerment. The security cluster. Well, uh, we need to get uh, uh, capable people to run our uh, 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 security cluster. You know, um, in the police, we, we had it right with uh, uh, General Beggy Kelly as a commissioner. He had his own problems. But the man had uh, his mind, his heart, his soul at the right place and wanted to do the right thing and transform uh, 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 the police and make sure that the police become, you know, a functional uh, institution. We have a problem in the army in that uh, there are still a lot of white people who are holding into strategic positions of power in the army and they are even stealing the assets of the army and they are refusing to transform the army because that's where uh, they are still benefiting the most. I think that uh, uh, Mama and Nagula, she's not doing a, a proper job in transforming uh, that uh, institution. I'd hoped that the president will change the Minister of Justice um, because uh, Masuta seems to be not uh, having a clear direction of what he wants to do, but also he doesn't enjoy the respect of the bench and uh, of the entire uh, legal uh, fraternity. So we need to transform the bench. We need to transform the uh, prosecuting authority. We need to transform the investigating unit of the police so that we have a balanced uh, you know, a security and justice uh, cluster because without that, we are compromised. The intelligence in South Africa is extremely uh, compromised. It was given to a clown. I'm not sure if uh, uh, Dupuo uh, will handle it uh, uh, properly. But uh, I think we must give a, a benefit of doubt and see how uh, she will go about it. The intelligence is harboring a lot of criminals, um, um, especially the ex-convicts who are there, who are now serving as agents, who are milking a lot of money from uh, intelligence services, peddling lies, and even engaged in criminal activities. Some such examples are those who were involved in the hacking of the deputy president, then now the president's emails, to try and discredit him so that he cannot contest against uh, the wife of the former president. So we cannot have the institutions of the state managed like that. We need the intelligence to safeguard the sovereignty of South Africa by ensuring that they deal with counterintelligence and avoid any possible destabilization, be it internal or external. But I don't think that uh, uh, those uh, people have, uh, uh, you know, the clear program on how to do that. I think the DG also is compromised. He's involved in a, a, a lot of compromised dealings. And uh, we've seen yesterday the attack on the, uh, 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 the author of the book which are exposing some of the wrongdoings in the in the security cluster. 
So, so the president might have to spend a lot of time there, ensuring that right people are put in right places and they've got a clear agenda of turning around the security cluster to safeguard the sovereignty of our country. On international relations, where are we? Hey, well, what are we supposed to do? It looks like we have regressed. Absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I, I celebrate the removal of uh, Maite Nguana Mashawan. I think that uh, uh, she was overwhelmed by that responsibility. When, when President Zuma wanted to send uh, Nguazazana to be the chairperson of the African Union, I asked him, what is the agenda? What, what must she go and do uh, in the African Union? Because I've never heard you speaking about any other program that needs to be advocated for in the uh, continent. There's no clear African agenda. We don't have a clear plan on how uh, we can improve both the economy and the political situation uh, in, in Africa. Um, our African states, many of them constitute failed African states. We need to help them. The economy in a lot of African countries has collapsed, leading to many Africans, brothers and sisters, coming to countries like South Africa and Botswana and many other countries to come and look for greener pastures. So we need to revive the economy of African continent. So we must look at our state-owned enterprises with capacity to go and help the African continent to revive the, uh, uh, the economy of Africa. We must trade freely as African countries and do away with tariffs, especially when it comes to uh, products that come from our continent. But the African Union should then develop a mechanism to ensure that European countries, including China, don't go and dump in other countries and those countries bring those things into uh, South Africa and behave like those are their own products only to find that they are fronting for other outside uh, uh, countries, outside uh, you know, Africa. So we must also engage in a program to strengthen democratic practices. The, 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 the long stay in power should be discouraged. Democratic elections should be encouraged in Africa and the elections should be free and fair. And African leaders should have the capacity to accept the will of the people. And anyone else who refuses to accept the will of the people should be isolated from uh, the African Union. Countries like Morocco should be excluded from the African Union because of how they are treating countries like Western Sahara. So any country in Africa engaged in uh, unacceptable practices uh, of politics should be isolated and any country that violates human rights and threatens the sovereignty of other countries should be isolated. Any leader that refuses to accept the democratic outcome or want to engage in an overstay in power, such a person should be isolated and should be actually told uh, to relinquish office because it doesn't create uh, good practices in Africa. And it is such conduct which leads to failed African states overburdening countries like South Africa because of failed economy in those, uh, in those countries. We believe that the role that China is playing in Africa should be a role that South Africa should be playing. We've got the necessary skill, we've got the necessary expertise, we can move into many of these African countries and help them to revive uh, their own economy. Look at a company like AXA. AXA is one of the best companies in, in South Africa, which builds airport. To build an airport is not like building an RDP house. It's the most complicated thing. Many African countries don't know how to do that. Let's go and build airports in the whole of African continent and say to them, we'll get our money through uh, ownership, which you will relinquish after a particular period and then hand over to the state, 30 years, 40 years, uh, as long as the state there agrees on a period. Then we do that, make our money, come back and invest that money in the fiscals of South Africa. Look at ESCO, a properly run ESCO, which is well capacitated, can go and help Nigeria, for instance, uh, Lagos in particular, to install a reliable electricity uh, in, in that big city 
of, of Nigeria. Once we do that, put a reliable electricity, collect from Nigerians, depending on what are the uh, terms and agreement, we can collect a lot of money. The Nigerians get electricity, investment gets attracted to Nigeria, we make money out of that, come and grow uh, the economy uh, of, uh, of South Africa. There's a huge potential. MTN got fined in Nigeria. It must just tell you that there are companies of South Africa which are operating in Nigeria. Why can't we have the state-owned companies to go and look at opportunities in the whole of African continent? We go in with an intention to help revive the African economy, but we'll be making money out of it, growing the South African economy. So we can be China if we want to be, but not a, an exploitative China, which is going to import labor and import everything into those countries. We work with them, we transfer skill, so that by the time we pull out, they can run a successful economy. Turning to the EFF, the perception that uh, you are a dictator within the party, mm -hmm. the reports that uh, many have left the party, why these allegations? Is this something that's happening within the party? And if so, why? Well, I've been called a dictator from the youth league times because uh, those who hate me can find fault with my politics. I mean, uh, if you look at the type of leadership we have in the EFF, there's no one who can dictate that leadership. It's a well-grounded leadership, both politically, economically, and intellectually. They've got their own independent thinking and um, they express themselves anyhow. Uh, I mean, I can imagine dictating to Dalimbov on what needs to happen. He's a, rebe he's a rebel on his own. He's, that's how he's known throughout his uh, uh, politics when he was still young and during his time at Vets. So it can be correct. Um, um, there's no one who left uh, 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 the EFF and put actually the blame on me. Um, they've always tried to find fault with other people and majority of the people who left they were saying no we want to protect the president the people around the president are wrong people and all that none has ever said i left specifically because of this guy the people who left parliament uh, majority of them are the ones we told them to go it's mkritama's group we expelled them the rest were because they were non-performers Otherwise, uh, others got redeployed into the municipalities where we needed a uh, proper skill. For instance, in, I remember one uh, comrade was redeployed back to um, uh, Rustenburg because we had uh, an intention to take over uh, that municipality. So we needed a proper skill there. None of the people left there as a, as a, as a protest. Go and talk to them. So how can it be a rebellion when they are told by us to leave? It can, we just released two of them now because of non-performance and not bring result. We're not going to protect mediocrity in the EFF. You are rewarded according to your hard work, both in parliament and in the organization. All of us who are given regions and provinces and branches to go and launch. You are judged based on that. If you don't perform, you are out. We are not here to nurse feelings. We are not here uh, to, uh, you know, protect laziness. We don't want to be a, a, an organization that uh, replaces a tendency with another with the same tendency. The ANC's fault is, amongst others, laziness and corruption. So we, we can't we can't be found, uh, you know, doing similar things if we want to be an alternative uh, uh, to the ANC. So. There is no rebellion. Rebellion will mean half of the central command team of the EFF has resigned because they can't take it anymore. Half of the war council has resigned because they can't take it anymore. Half of uh, uh, parliament resigned because they can't take it anymore. By the way, percentage-wise, it is expected in a group of 25 people to say 25%. If you are saying 25% out of 260, like the ANC, it was going to be a call for concern. It can be a concern, especially if you, if you were to put their list years off, we'll tell you how this one left, how this, none of them left because they were protesting of leadership uh, qualities or leadership style. 
They never left because of that. The leadership is the one that said to them, the door is open or you are redeployed to this or that municipality. As Julius Malem said, a young Malem, Cossas, ANC is weak, now the president of the party. Is there anything that you regret? Zuma was a regret. I mean, uh, there we made a, a very a terrible mistakes based on propaganda and lies. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we, 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 we were made to hate President Mbegi uh, because we're told a lot of many other stories. The deputy president of the EFF actually reminds us that one day they were watching TV and then President Mbegi appeared on TV. The way they hated Mbegi with ordinary members of the youth league. One member of the youth league just stood up and said, Nangu Satan! Nangu Satan! on TV, pointing at President Mbegi. And today when you sit and reflect on such things, you're like, why would you point President Mbegi and say it's Nangu Satan? What did he do to even qualify to be called Satan? So, we were brainwashed like that. We were told lies that Zuma is a unifier, uh, Zuma will strengthen the alliance, Zuma is the most accessible man, Zuma is an organic intellectual. If you don't know the definition of organic intellectual, just look at Zuma. The opposite is what Zuma is. And we actually realized that in a uh, Immediately after 2007, because if you remember my speech, you must go into the archives of SABC when I spoke at uh, Rustenberg uh, Stadium when we were launching the ANC Manifesto 2011, January 8. I said we have not elected a family to come and run our affairs here in the ANC and the country. I spoke about these Guptas and Zuma having surrendered the country in 2011, January 8. So we had actually realized it much earlier. And that's when we, in the youth league, took a decision that we must approach him and tell him to resign, or rather not to stand in 2012 uh, conference and give Khalima uh, that uh, opportunity. But otherwise, the rest of the issues, political posture, political issues I, I, I advanced, are the same issues I've advanced when I was in courses. You know, people want to tell us that we cannot talk about free education. We, we, we hijacked the story of the free education and all that. But the biggest match I organized here in Johannesburg, when I was a president of COSAS, it was demanding free education. All of these clowns were not there. So no one can tell me that, no, you are speaking about free education now because you see people talking about it. It is on record, it is on archives. Matched the biggest match here in the city of Johannesburg by the students. The last one was led by me demanding free education before it became fashionable now. So, land, uh, nationalization, all of those issues that I'm advocating for now are the same issues I've advocated for while I was in courses, while I was in the uh, ANC. Corruption, we fought against it when we're in the ANC, because my 2011 speech was anti-corruption speech, that you cannot surrender the powers of the president to a family because of a corrupt relationship you have with the Gupta family. So otherwise, I'm, I'm, I'm content, I'm happy. I think I'm growing properly. No point of return or going back? Well, I think the ANC is, is going to have to rely on people like us outside for its uh, 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 direction, because it's directionless. You cannot see people who are directionless uh, doing what they are doing and then you go and join them. There is no direction. President Ramaphosa demonstrated with his reshuffle that there is no direction. He's got a lot of people to satisfy. The NDZ people, the ANC, the CR, the SACP, COSATU, and then white monopoly capital also has got its own people. So it's a, it's a concoction and when you check all of them, they do not have the same you know, agenda. So why should I go back uh, uh, to, make a, uh, to contribute to such a, 
confusion. If the question should be, what do you want to do? Uh, and whether what you want to do is not being done where you are. Because I think the same thing I will do in the ANC is what I'm doing now in the EFF. Uh, uh, there's nothing that I want to do which requires of me to go and do it in the ANC. Otherwise, if I'm outside the ANC, I won't be able to do it. I'm doing everything. Actually, the leaving the ANC has actually contributed to our personal development. Today, we've got... Uh, academic qualifications we didn't have when we were in the ANC because we are preoccupied with nonsense. So now we are focused, we are dealing with issues of building society and developing ourselves at the same time. So the ANC is actually a mess. When you are in the ANC, you live a lie. You've got, the, the, you know, they indoctrinate us at a very early age that they, 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 there is no life outside ANC. Even old people, they will tell you of how their parents died in the ANC, how they will not leave it and all of that. It's no longer politics. It's, it, it, they, it's, like, it's like a religion. It can, politics can't be a religion. Like when you have left the ANC, you have committed a sin. No, I, I, want to be, I want to be an example of a person who survives uh, outside the, the ANC. Figile Mbalula. A very close friend of Julius Malema. Right now, you hold different views in terms of political direction. Mbalula is a is a hard worker. You you can't take that away from him. He might have his witnesses of wanting to behave like a celebrity and all of that, but give the guy a job, he will do it. Um, if the president, if I had an ear for the president, I would have told him remove him from the police because the police don't need uh, this type of Mbalula's approach. Put him somewhere, he will work for you. He's a, he's a, he's a hard worker and uh, they should have protected a guy like that. Uh, so, but I, I spoke to him, I told him, you are not the first one. And uh, stop tweeting. I even told Tony and Gaini to take the phones uh, from, uh, from him because he was beginning to say, to do or treat things that are out of character and I was like don't do it you're not the first one you will go back people get out of cabinet they go back to cabinet so don't behave in a manner that will make it even difficult for other people to consider you you know uh, uh, in future so I, 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 I guess it was a and you know immediate reaction uh, to a shock but uh, uh, well, he's fine. They gave him something in the ANC. If he still believes in the ANC, let him go and work. And uh, he must stop taking it personally. It happens. Uh, he was with us when we got expelled by the same guy uh, who said to us, come and appeal to me, they've messed up your case. And then we went to him and he kicked us like dogs. So why should Mbalula be worried about uh, Cyril? Cyril will be gone. Mbalula will remain. That's what I told Zuma. I said, You'll be gone, you'll be seeing us on TV, you'll be in the village, we'll still be here because we've got age on our side. So Mbalula has got age on his side, he must just uh, reorganize himself and focus on what, uh, uh, you know, uh, his uh, task and then work for his organization if he so wishes. But uh, it's a loss to, to Ramaphosa, he lost, there he lost a man, uh, he lost a hard worker, he lost a... Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, a person who speaks open. If Ramaphosa destroyed Mbalula because Mbalula didn't support him, then Cyril is a coward. Mbalula had a right to support anyone. I didn't agree with him. Actually, we're not speaking to each other in the period uh, towards the conference because I was telling him, you're messing up. So, if you punish him for that, you can't punish a person for thinking. He was thinking, he thought he was correct. The conference is over, he has embraced a new leadership. What is the point of going after him? You know, you cannot punish dissent. You ought to accept that people have different views. But, well, it is their own issues. From a personal point of view, uh, I think uh, Mbalula will survive. Uh, he, he is part of the future. He, he must not worry about things that don't belong to him. He see a thing is waiting for him. In the future, it depends on what he does now. If he self-destructs, he may not reach that destiny, but 
the destiny and the future ahead of him looks bright, he, he shouldn't want.